my friends. It's another day in paradise. Yes, it's always another day in paradise if you have another math video just waiting to be seen. And my friends, we have a doozy today. We do. I'm telling you, it's problem solving lesson 10.6. Ooh, I love my yes. Oh, I, did I hear somebody say, but Mr. Wara, those are your two favorite words in math. And I'm like, they are. Problem solving. And looks like our topic is all about problem solving, customary, and metric conversions. Yes. But we need some focus, my friends. We need a purpose. I just need a purpose. And it is the essential question. That is our purpose. And it says, how can you use this strategy, make a table to help you solve problems about customary and metric conversions? Wow. So we're going to be using both customary and metric conversions now, but we're going to be using the strategy, make a table. But of course, we need to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says Aaron is making fruit punch for a family reunion. Cool. He needs to make 120 cups of punch. If he wants to store the fruit punch in gallon containers, how many gallon containers will Aaron need? Ooh, and it even says use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. Very cool. Okay, then, well, first I do want to look over at our conversion table. And that conversion table, at first glance, looks confusing. Oh my goodness, but... If you recall, this is like our little grid. So when we're looking across, we can see the one gallon. One gallon up above is equal to one gallon. One gallon is equal to four quarts. Oh, I get it. One gallon is equal to, yes, eight pints. And here is something we didn't have in previous videos, but there are 16 cups in one gallon. Very, very good. I think that was one of the problems we faced. But now what's interesting is look what we have down below one gallon. We have one quart and one quart says that it's equal to a quarter gallon. So like we always think of that bigger unit and we're always trying to find out how many of that smaller unit makes up that one bigger unit, like the gallon, he's the big guy, remember, king gallon. But now we have quarts and it's what is a quart compared to a gallon. And really by that quarter, you can say that that's how many gallons makes up one quart. You're like, mm, that sounds confusing, Mr. Wara. You are totally confusing me. Think about it. You have your gallon unit. How many gallons can make up a quart? Not even one, only a quarter of a gallon make up one quart. However, one quart makes up one quart. You can see two pints equals, equals a quart. We had that one before. Four cups equals one quart. So this conversion table, oh my goodness. This is like the secret document of something really important. I mean, it just seems so, it has all this information on that one conversion table. So my friends, we will probably be using this again. Now, let's go ahead and read the problem below. Oh, no, you again? Hey, <laughs> you know, you're not the feature animal of the day. So what are you doing here? Uh, oh, really? Boy, he does sound like he's kind of powerful, doesn't he? You're, yeah, you're one character, that's for sure. What, are you going to just keep popping in in all the videos now? I mean, come on. We know fifth graders love unicorns, but as I found out, but really, you're going to be in all of them now? Well, you know what? Uh, if you don't mind, we do need to move you out of the way. Sorry. Okay, there you go. Space out again. <laughs> now, I have a feeling he will be coming back. I don't know. It just seems to me. But let's go ahead and think about the problem we're doing, the math. This is why we're here. It says, what do I need to find? And I always think this is the easiest part, at least of most math problems, because they're geared toward asking you a question. So it says, I need to find. What do we need to find in this particular problem? Well, we had that 120 cups of punch. He basically, well, let's go back to the problem rather than me second guess. Yes. It says that he needs to make 120 cups of punch. So he wants to store it though, and he needs to know how many gallon containers. So when I think about what do I need to find? Yeah, I need to find how many gallon containers can be filled with the 120 cups of punch. Oh my goodness, could that be any more perfect? Yes, it fit right in there. And that is the information that we need to find. Now it says, what information do I need to use? Now what I think, since we have two different units of measures, we have that cups, but we have the gallon. So it seems to me that we need to know the number of cups, you know, being made, and, because we need to know that, because that's 120, but we also need to know the number of cups in one gallon. All right, let's get that information in. It 
is how will I use the information? Says I will make a table to show the relationship between yeah the number of and then oh the number of cups and the number of gallons. And that's what we just just talked about in that previous question. Yeah, we asked that question. We said you know we 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 need to know that relationship. I like that word relationship. Suggest how they're related, the two of them together. And we do know, and I was getting ready to go up on top to look at our conversion chart because that was just a great chart. But down below, it looks like they're going to help us out here. So let's take a look. Yeah, it has to solve the problem. So it says there are blank cups in one gallon. So each cup is that much of a gallon. Let's go to the top. And there you go. You can see it right there. There are 16 cups in one gallon. That's the information that we need to use our chart because this cup here right lines up with the gallon going across like a grid so we could write that in here it says there are 16 cups in one gallon so each cup is how much of a gallon wouldn't that just be 1 16th because we have 16 16 parts of that one gallon oh it actually already started it for us okay there you go 1 16th that means two cups would be 1 eighth okay does that make sense that's half yeah it's a half the amount and then that would mean three cups when compared to a gallon would be 3 sixteenths, four cups of one gallon. Now you have, that would actually be four over 16 because everything's over 16 because that's how many cups there are in one gallon. But we can reduce that four sixteenths, make an equivalent fraction of one quarter by dividing a four out. So then the question becomes, whoa, if you have 120 cups, how many gallons are you going to have? Now it also says we're going to be multiplying by something. Hmm, very interesting. What did we multiply by in all of these problems here? Well, we had the 1, then we got 1 16th, 2. Ah, if you look at the denominator, and what it looks like to me here, it looks like that we're multiplying by 1 16th every time because that is the amount that's being gained. If this is 1 16th, this is 2 16th, 3 16th. See how that's working out? And even though that says 1 8th, that 2 is an equivalent fraction not to get you lost just trying to explain so we'd have to take 120 times 1 16th so 120 times 1 16th is our expression okay and then what i need to do now is just simply multiply across well 120 times 1 16th is just 120 over 16. Now what we can do is a couple things. We could go ahead and divide that out, see how many times 16 will go into 120. Although my immediate response is want to, to split this number in half. Have you ever done that? See, if I cut the 16 in half, that's like divided by 2. That gives me 8. Divide that by 2, I get 60. And I can still keep dividing. Divide that in half, that'll give me 4. Divide that in half, I get 30. Divide that in half, I get 2. That in half, I get 15. So I have 15 over 2, and that won't reduce any further. Sometimes I just do that because it's easy to find the half of a number as opposed to taking this and setting your problem up and going 120. So you'd still be in the same situation. You'd have to figure out how many times is 16 going to go into this one huge number. So by just splitting it in half, dividing out a 2 every time, and that's what I did do, divided by 2. So 15 over 2, so that would be what? 7 and a half. And I got that seven and a half by, yeah, look at how many holes. I can make a lot of holes here. Two over two, two over two. I can do a lot of these. If you keep adding them up, you can eventually get what you would have 14 over two. Okay. And that's just equal to seven. And then I add on my one extra that I had and I get one half, seven and a half. So Aaron needs seven and one half gallons, a gallon, I'm sorry, gallon. I should have a hyphen there. Containers to store the punch. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay. Should we look at mathematical practice number two? Let's take a look. So math mathematical practice two states that we reason abstractly and quantitatively. This is, I think, one of the more difficult mathematical practices to understand. If you look below, it says, I can use reasoning habits to help me contextualize and decontextualize problems. We can contextualize by taking numbers and putting them in a real world context. So if you had an example here, like here it has three times two and a half is equal to seven and a half, that you can actually take that equation and contextualize it, put it in a real world problem. Like I walk two and a half miles per day for three days. See how that fits into that equation? Equation, and then I walked a total of seven and a half miles. And decontextualize is just the opposite, where you can take that word problem that we just listed and then put it back into the actual numbers. And that's what this is all about. We love you, mathematical practice number two. You're just awesome. So it says, will all of the gallon containers Aaron uses be filled to capacity? Explain. 
Uh, like I always say, good question. Okay, well, you know, we like good questions, and we're going to answer this question by thinking, first of all, we need to use some reasoning here. We know that there's 16 cups in one gallon. We actually determine that it's going to be seven and a half gallons. So this question is really easy because we've already arrived at our result of 120 cups is equal to seven and a half gallons. So will all of the gallons containers Aaron uses be filled to capacity and explain? And the answer is no, they won't be. Because you can see by looking at the result, seven of those gallons are going to be filled to the max. But that last gallon container, it'll only be half full. Let's write that down. Yeah, yeah. There we go, my friends. Here's my little explanation for that question. Now it's time for Page Master. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, what do you What do you need me to say, huh? I believe you. I believe in unicorns. Is that it? Yes, buddy. <laughs> I mean, you guys are pretty awesome, you know? You really are. Unicorns are cool. I can't believe I'm saying this. Okay, please don't have this recorded. I mean, really. <laughs> the way she's looking at me, I gotta remember it's a she, huh? Come on, let's get you off the page. Can I just shrink you down or something? Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to write on you. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, oh, hey. Hey, you call, you say you're magical. Well, that was my magic pen, sort of, not really. Okay, there you go, I cleaned you up. Whew, at least I, oh, at least she's gone. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, I don't know what to do. Now it says try another problem. Yay, look at we have another chart, but oh my goodness, no, this chart's different. It's the metric unit chart. Okay, but I still like it. I will say, I can't emphasize this enough. You know, Mr. Wara, you really do need to get a bell. Well, it's just, it's, it's just so important when I look at that chart and I think that's a chart I would write down in my notes because that's letting you know certain conversions. And maybe you're not going to memorize that table, but maybe it'll get you to the point where you start understanding how the units are exchanged with each other based on value. Like if you look at the one meter there at the top, look across. One meter, of course, is equal to one meter, but one meter is equal to... 10 decimeters. So you know one meter is larger than a decimeter because you need more decimeters to make up one meter. And when you keep going across, you can see centi, 100, yeah, centimeters, 100. I, you just have to love these charts really come in handy. Anyway, the problem says Sharon is working on a project for her art class, or for art class. She needs to cut strips of wood that are each one decimeter long to complete the project. If Sharon has seven strips of wood that are each one meter long, how many one decimeter strips can she cut? Ooh, I love it. Good problem, good problem. Well, we look here, here we have our graphic organizer again. And remember, the whole purpose here was that strategy, right? To make a table. Well, here it says, what do I need to find? Man, it's so similar like our last problem. It's just kind of, the, they haven't given us all the little blanks making it easy for us, but what do I need to find? Yeah, it's the information. I need to find how many one decimeter lengths of wood Sharon can cut. Okay, that's really the question. They want to know how many. So let's write that down. Cool, right on. Piece of cake, eh? Cakewalk. What information do I need to use? And just like our last problem, we're going to apply that to our understanding that we were looking at those two different units. So here we definitely need to know or need to use the number of meter strips Sharon has, which was given to us in the problem. And I believe she had, what was, what was our number? There it is. She has seven strips of wood. We're going to definitely use that information and also the number of decimeters there are in one meter. And we were looking at that table just earlier and just coincidental decimeter. We knew there were 10 in every meter, but this is the information that we're going to need to use. We, well, I need to use the number of meter strips. By the way, we know it's seven. I'm going to put that in there. Sharon has, and then also, and the number of decimeters. Whoop, I went over in one meter. There you go. How am I going to use this information? Well, I'm going to make a table. Is that what we're doing? We're going to make a table. And again, in that last problem, it was about that relationship. So we're going to show the relationship between the meters here, uh, the number of meters, and of course, the number of decimeters. 
because we got to have to get our answer in decimeters and the strips of wood she has is in meters. So in, in essence, we are converting. So let's go ahead and put that. I will. I'm just going to use that sign for number. That's an abbreviation and the number of decimeters. And we can even put decimeters as DM, I believe, for decimeters. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now come to solving the problem. Well, last time we used a table, we're going to use a table here. Let's go ahead and start. And you can see my lines are all squiggly as I use my little tablet. <laughs> Boy, is that ever squiggly. Can you deal with it? OK, and then we'll kind of go down the middle here. Yeah, OK, Mr. War, you are really drawing a straight line. Not. And then I'm going to put little lines in between. Of course, I'm going to be comparing the meter and the decimeter, and that's dm. Obviously, if we had one meter, we already looked up on the chart before, and we already know there's 10 decimeters in one meter. So now we're just going across. We're going to show two. Then we're going to have three. We're going to have four. And then we could even do five. Why not? Six. And this last one would be seven. Be really long. Okay, because that's actually what the problem's asking us to do. This is really, really easy, isn't it? <laughs> this is why you have to love the metric system. It's just, look at this, just how quickly one can determine the quantities, how little math is involved. And that's why people love the metric system for this reason. Well, when we compare these two, just like the last time, what did we multiply by? Last time it was 1 16th. It was kind of an odd number. Here, we're just multiplying by 10. I'm sure you can see that. 7 times 10 is 70. 6 times 10 is 60. This is really easy to, to set up. Basically, you know, that this would solve the problem. I don't know if they want any words, but, you know, we can say one, this is huge, one meter is equal to 10 decimeters. There we go. So nice. And um, so, you know, we made this table to show the relationship between the meters and decimeters. You can use this table to find out the number of one decimeter strips Sharon did cut. And we did by right here. Is there a little statement here? Here we go. Here's the written statement. So Sharon can cut. We can tell by just looking at our chart, you know, it is going to be 71 decimeter lengths to complete her project. Very nice. Do we have time for mathematical practice seven? Let's take a quick look. Yeah, it just says look for and make use of structure. And it says, I can see and understand how numbers and spaces are organized and put together as parts and holes. And that table, I guess, is maybe that connection a little bit here with mathematical practice seven. Yeah, thank you, mathematical practice seven. Goodbye. And so, just like that, we move on. So look for a pattern. What relationship did the table you made show? Okay, yeah, it showed me the relationship between meters and decimeters for sure, all right? It showed me what we already wrote up there, how one meter is equal to 10 decimeters. It shows the relationship, the table does, it shows the relationship with meters and decimeters. And we already determined that one meter was equal to 10 decimeters, just like that. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, it's already coming to an end. I do like that music in the background. Woohoo! Now, my friends, you know, it's like this video like barely started, and now it's over. It's gone! That's okay, we're good, we're good, because another math video is be coming soon. Now, come on, I know you're out there, Miss Unicorn. Where are you? Where are you? There you are, see? Showing your magic, okay. Yeah, all hail the unicorn. <laughs> anyway, did you have something you wanted to say? What'd I tell you? See, she's my new spokesperson. You know, Miss Unicorn, I might like having you around now. <laughs> yes, I believe in unicorns. Okay, yeah, they're cool. Oh, look at, yeah, you like the video if you liked it. <laughs> anyway, now my friend, live long and prosper.